Hi and welcome to Neat AI. So a long time ago I used to write poker bots, just for fun, playing for real money on the penny stakes tables. The card counting blackjack AI I did last month involved coding up an object model for a betting table, which included a dealer, decks, cards and opponents. Really all that's missing for me to use it as the basis for training a poker bot is a fast hand evaluator. This is a function that will allow me to rapidly compare poker hands to determine the winner, and also let me compare a poker hand's strength relative to all possible poker hands. Typically, when people start out, they build what are known as naive evaluators, which involve sorting and rearranging the cards, as well as some logic which tries to run through all the different possibilities. But ultimately, this tends to be a bit frustrating. What's really needed is a function which can take any five card poker hand with the cards in any order, convert this into some number, and use this as the index and other cup table to find the correct hand ranking. What's meant by hand ranking? Well, there are nearly 2.6 million five card combinations in a deck of 52 cards, but we don't need to rank a hand strength compared to all 2.6 million combinations. This is because there are a lot of different hands with an equal ranking. These two flushes are different poker hands, but have an equal ranking. So how do we use this information to reduce the size of the search space? Well, if you assign each of the combinations to 2.6 million people, gather them together in a stadium, and ask anybody with a straight flush to step forward, you'll find that you have 40 unique combinations, but only 10 distinct combinations. And this is because a diamond royal flush will have the same ranking as a spade royal flush. If we do this for all the other hand combinations and distinguish between the unique and distinct groups, four of a kind drops from 624 to 156, Straights get whittled down from over 10,000 to just 10, and so on. When it's all done, the stadium is empty, and we end up with a very manageable 7,462 distinct hand combinations. You can download a table with all of them listed out, from the best hand rank of a royal flush at number one, all the way down to an unsuited high card at the bottom of the list. You'll need this list to continue, so I'll add a link in the description. Before we get into it, I'll need to encode our cards with some information. I'll set bits based on the card value, its suit and rank, and I'll assign a prime number to each card. I'll explain why that's needed later on. The card rank is encoded in four bits, so a two will be a zero, a three will be a one, and so on, up to an ace, which will be a 12. And the prime numbers will increase sequentially up to an ace, which is set as 41. By way of an example, here's the encoding for the king of diamonds. Bits are set for the king card identifier, the diamond suit, as well as the rank and prime number. All that equates to a very large number, which now has encoded within it all the information we need, and it can be extracted using bit masks. This only needs to be done once, and is repeated for all cards in the deck. For this method to work, only three questions need to be asked when ranking a poker hand, but they must be asked in the correct order. First question is, do I have a flush? If the answer is yes, then I'll retrieve the hand ranking from a lookup table. If it's not a flush, then the next question to ask is, do I have a straight or a high card? In other words, are my cards unique? To find out, you check your second lookup table, and if it returns a zero, then you'll need to go on to the final step and check the last lookup table to get the hand rank. It's very fast, capable of ranking over a million hands per second on my old PC. So let's build our flush lookup table. We'll need an array with 7,937 rows, and I'll populate it with zeros to start. Next, let's grab that table and scan down through it, looking for all the flushes and straight flushes. When we find one, we'll need to extract the array index from the cards that make up the hand. For example, if we take the hand shown, we know it's a flush because there's an F against it in the hand column. I take the coded number for each card, and it's the 16 last bits in green that I'm interested in. This section holds the card value information. I need to perform a bitwise OR operation on the five numbers to extract all the card values and then shift it to the right by 16 bits. The end result is a single number. In this case, it's 6,405. That might sound complicated, but it's really just one line of code. And remember, all of my encoded card numbers are just big integers. I'm only showing the binary bits data here so you can see what's going on. So I go to my flushes array to row 6405 and pop in the hand rank of 429 for that card combination. 
and I go through the entire hand equivalency table and I do this for every flush that I find. At the end of all this, I have a fully populated flushes array. Most of the entries are zero, but I can now use this to check the hand rank of any flush combination in the deck. And how do I do this? Well, that brings us back to question number one. Do I have a flush? Look at the example here. Clearly it's a flush, but how do I check it based on what we've done so far? The first thing to do is look at the bit patterns for the cards and apply a bit mass to them using a bitwise AND operation. If this yields a non-zero value, then we have a flush. That's the first check. So if we have a flush, we then look at the bit scheme as before and applies a bitwise OR operation to it and bit shifted 16 bits to the right. This gives us our array index and we can retrieve our hand ranking from that row. Double checking it against our original table, we find that we do indeed have the correct cards and hand ranking. But what if the answer to the first question is no, we don't have a flush? Well then I need to ask question two. And to see how that works, you need to check out part two in this PokerBot series. As always, thanks for watching.